Well, let's have a look at the athletes from the first heat. Matt Hudson-Smith, by, by the way, the uh, European champion and bronze medalist of the World Championships, goes in heat four for England. There's the uh, lineup: up Highs of Namibia, Timbachi of Vanuatu, Anthony Cox of Jamaica, Solomon of Australia, Steve Solomon, watch him, Kamaraj of uh, Sri Lanka, Desroy Jordan of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and uh, Shay Lara of Trinidad and Tobago on the outside. So with only three non-automatic qualifier spots, that's uh, make the first three or you're not going to make it through to the semis is really the message. There is Che Lara, 46-92 man this year. He'll be running blind. His personal best was last year, 46-4. In lane seven, for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He's actually the national 800 metres champion this year. Desroy Jordan, the 21-year-old, best of 47-76 this year. In six, Kalinga Kumaraj of uh, Sri Lanka, three times their champion and the reigning champion, said his personal best actually, but back on the 23rd of April, he hasn't raced since the middle of June. In five, the very experienced Australian Steve Solomon, eighth in the Olympic Games in London 2012, remember that, ten years ago now, a semi-finalist in Tokyo last year, and he holds the Australian record for 400 indoors at 45-4, good athlete, there's Anthony Cox, of Jamaica had COVID in Eugene, but was able to compete in the heats of the 4x400 for his nation. Came third in the Jamaican Championships earlier on this summer. There's obedient Timbaki of Vanuatu. Went out in his heat for the World Championships, the 19-year-old best of 52.85 this year, and that is his lifetime best. And then in two is uh, Ivan Danny Geldenhuis of Namibia, 21 in a few days' time. The uh, South African. Uh, semi-finest in the African Championships in Mauritius back in early June, but he hasn't raced either since early June, the 20-year-old Gelden Heese. 46-4, his best this year. Remember the first three go through by right, so he'll be right on the cusp of it, will uh, even Danny Gelden Heese. The uh, on your marks. reigning champion is Mokwala. He's up Makwala of Botswana. Indeed, his teammate Babaloki Thebe took out the silver on the Gold Coast back in 2018. So the first heat of seven then in the men's 400 metres. Golden Heast in two, Timbaki of Vanuatu in three, Cox of Jamaica four, Solomon of Australia in five, the Sri Lankan Kumaraj in six, Jordan of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in seven, and Lara of Trinidad and Tobago in lane eight. Set. Well, qualifying from this should be a formality for an athlete of the calibre of Steve Solomon of Australia, but he'll want a solid run. He's in five. They're right in the centre in the yellow with the greenish shorts. Fourth from left at the moment, moving well down the back straight. And actually quickest away is Kumaraj of Sri Lanka, really quick through the first 200 in that blue strip. He's a 45-8 performer this year, but he leads at the moment by quite some margin. Solomon going OK right in the centre. Inside him, the Jamaican best of Anthony Cox is moving well around the second bend as they come into the straight. Kumaraj has given 101% through the first 300. Now he's chased down by the big figure of Cox, the Jamaican, who looks very strong for the last 50. Solomon follows him through, and he's under real pressure here for third place, and I think he just loses out there to Golden Heath of Namibia, who gets third spot. It is the first three, remember, who go through by right. And I think, despite giving everything for the first 380, it was nearly enough. Kimaraj of Sri Lanka might just have got run out of it. It was very tight at the line. No doubting the strong finish and fine form of uh, Anthony Cox. Maybe a little bit frustrated after not being give, able to give his all in Eugene a couple of weeks back because of COVID. But he wins in 45-51. That is only a couple of clicks outside his lifetime best from earlier on this season. And Steve Solomon, 45-98, a solid second for Australia. And it was even Danny, Danny Geldenhuis of uh, the Namibia who took third place, 46.51. Kumaraj will have to wait and see, but 46.53, I'm not sure it'll be quick enough. Desiree Jordan of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a personal best for him. Significant leap forward, 47.29. Oh, I was willing, I was absolutely willing the Sri Lankan third from the left here as we look at it to get himself home in the top three. It was a really bold piece of running because he knew the likes of Cox 
of Jamaica and Solomon, who seems to have been around for a lifetime, made the Olympic final. Must have been a teenager then, back in uh, 2012. The uh, Sri Lankan knew that they would be coming and closing, and that he'd start wading through treacle towards the back end of the race. Gelton Hughes did really well to come through in lane two. Good running by Cox, just off the podium in the World Youth a few years ago. So unlucky to get COVID in Eugene and not be able to perform at his best. It's a good run by Solomon there, and Gelton Hoos out dipping Kumaraj. So the Sri Lankan will have to wait to see whether he can claim one of the three non-automatic spots. But remember, that's three non-automatic spots from seven heats. Good running by Cox, third in the Jamaican national champs, just to make it as any level of international in a Jamaican sprint event shows you the calibre of the man we've just been watching just off the podium in the World Youth and he'll be absolutely determined to remind everybody what he could have produced in Eugene had Covid, COVID not brought his aspirations at the Worlds to a premature end. Well, there it is. You can see the fine form of Anthony Cox. Bottom of picture, working hard with the arms there. And that is very nearly a lifetime best. And I think there's a considerably more to come from the 21 year old Solomon of Australia in the dark glasses moving well and you can see the effort from even Danny Gelden he's here he is with about 40 to go he's way back in fourth but he keeps battling away Kumaraj by far the smallest of the four in shot just tying up the stride length going the knees not coming up over the final meters and he just gets out dipped by uh, the Namibian Giving himself an early 21st birthday present in effect. There it is, Anthony Cox wins for Jamaica 45.51, a lovely big capital Q beside his name. Steve Solomon likewise for Australia in second place and Gelden Heuss of Namibia taking that precious third spot by four one hundredths of a second, sorry, two one hundredths of a second of uh, Kalinga Hewa Kamaraj of Sri Lanka. Well, the crowd's been entertained. Perry, the official mascot here at Birmingham 2022, comes out, entertains the crowd. I know we've mentioned it a few times over this first couple of days, but Perry, the official mascot, entertains the crowd in glorious sunshine here in Costa del Perry Bar. So the athletes are warmed up and ready. Going to heat number two of the men's 400 meters. Lanes two to eight being occupied. A reminder, first three and the next three will guarantee their spot in the semi-finals, which are on Friday. And the final of the men's and the women's 400 meters, incidentally, are on Sunday morning in the morning session, 10.45 and 11 o'clock of the 400 meter finals here in Birmingham. So starting in this second heat, Zong Yang Tan of Singapore. We'll start on the outside, 47-44 is best. That was back in 2019, no season's best for the 28 year old. In lane seven, Asa Guevara of Trinidad and Tobago fourth at the World Indoor Championships in 2018 in the 4x4 relay for Trinidad and Tobago. 45.86 this year. In lane number six, Nathan Allen of Jamaica didn't finish the World Championships a couple of weeks ago in his semi-final. 45.21 this year. Leongo Scotch of Botswana. Six at the World Championships in Oregon in that 4x400-meter relay. And start in lane number five. Emmanuel Wanga from Papua New Guinea. And start in lane number four. The 22-year-old, under 48 seconds at his best. Just outside of that time this season. Lane number three, Alfa Conte of Sierra Leone. Another athlete we don't have a season's best for, but under 49 seconds. Is a lifetime best for the athlete starting in lane number three. And Alexander Bock of Namibia holds the area record that he ran at altitude this year. 
45.8 is the time he's clocked in 2022. So should be centre lanes here, five and six. Scotch and Allen, the Botswana oh, athlete, in good form. Botswana, of course, celebrating because in Cali at the World Juniors just yesterday, that Sile Tobogo lowered his own World Junior 100 metre record to 9.91 seconds. So some good running by Botswana around the world. And Scotch in lane five is going to hopefully continue that here in this second heat. First three, guaranteed a place in those semi-finals. Keep your eye on Scotch and Allen in lane five and six. Seven. So a slightly longer hold by the starter, but we do get underway. And indeed, the Botswana in lane number five, Leongo Scotch going well, 45-25 this year. The All-African Games champion three seasons ago, moving nicely in the familiar colors of Botswana. Nathan Allen, the Jamaican, moving nicely in lane number six. There's no effort here from Allen, the Jamaican, in lane six at the moment. He's having an absolute stroll. Conte of Sierra Leone trying to keep in the mix in lane number three. But Allen of Jamaica not even out of third gear here. Guevara of Trinidad and Tobago looking to get an automatic spot in lane number seven. Scotch of Botswana will finish in second. 45.17 seconds. That was very, very impressive. Well, the Jamaican, I mentioned in his semi-final at the World Championships in Oregon, didn't finish. Wow, somebody's arrived in Birmingham, Tim, in very, very good form. I'm absolutely astonished, Kath, at how relaxed he looked like he was strolling around that top bend. And then when he came into the home straight, he just upped his game a little bit, started working hard with the arms, knees started coming up. And as uh, Botswana's uh, scotch inside him accelerated, so he accelerated almost effortlessly. It's one of the most relaxed 45 ones I've seen in a long, long time. I think that will, as a former 400 meter runner, go down for him, Nathan Allen, as probably one of his best runs ever. It wasn't reflected in the time that he ran, but again, it's the way that he ran it. He's a 44 1 3 athlete at his best. Let's not forget the Jamaican is world class just outside the 44 second barrier. But look at this replay, Tim. It's what caught my attention from the gun down the back straight. He's absolutely loping. The Botswana, to be fair, isn't putting much effort in either, Scott. But that's caught my attention, that has, and the Jamaican is doing nothing on the top end. And it's the season's best too, Kath. I mean, this is the thing. He looks, he's hardly using his arms here. It's like they're tied to his <laughs> hips there in that yellow vest. Very relaxed. And then here, this is nice. There's his transition. Just as he leans into the straight, there he goes. Starts working with her heart, pumping a little bit harder. There's something more boltesque about how relaxed he looked. Well, from Spanish town in Jamaica, the black, green and gold are going to have enjoyed that one and the other 400 meter runners in the heats to come. Here at the Commonwealth Games know that Nathan Allen, the Jamaican, is in form and is definitely gonna be in the mix. That was very, very good running. And a season's best too. I mean, I think, you know, you say he's coming into his best form, 45-18. You wonder where, uh, where he's been all summer, if he can run 45-1, looking Half asleep for 300 metres. Yes, you said quite rightly he's a 44-1 person, but I would have said off the back of that, Kath, you know better than us, you're a 400 metre specialist, but I would say off the back of that, he's in PB shape. Yeah, it's a tough one with 400 metres because how many times we've been at major championships and seen people shutting down with 60 to go or not really committing around the top bend and running fast times, and then when they come back under pressure and try and execute in different conditions, don't replicate it. But that is a very good sign from the Jamaican and the likes of Korea of Kenya, the likes of Matt Hudson-Smith of England will definitely take note at how easy that 45-18 season best clocking was for Nathan Allen. Scotch incidentally did come through for second and Gravera in third. Wow, here we go, the men's 400. The home favourite of England's Matt Hudson-Smith coming up in a later heat is going to have some competition here on his home track. And it could come in the form of that Jamaican run there. Very, very impressive. So confirmation of heat number two, Nathan Allen of Jamaica. Easy as you like, 45.18 seconds. Scotch and Guevara, as I mentioned, also automatically through to the semi-finals. Well done, Conte, a personal best in fifth, 47-12. 
God, that's one of the best runs I've seen so far over the couple of days. It was absolutely effortless for low 45s. Absolutely brilliant. That's Kyle Gale, studies at Kansas State University. He's just keeping himself nice and warm, which is pretty easy. The weather's playing ball uh, this lunchtime after smashing down with rain. First thing this morning, the weather is superb. That's Tansy of Papua New Guinea. 23 degrees now, perfect weather for sprinting. He had a PB, Tansy, earlier this year, 47.9. By the way, Conte, Catherine mentioned his PB, the Sierra Leonean athlete in the second of the seven heats. 47.12 is the third of the non-automatic times, but of course, we still have five left to go. Moresi, we just got a glimpse of him in two, and this is Nathaniel, semi-finalist in the African champs. The Nigerian will be second from the outside. Really disappointing for Nene, the South African, who doesn't start in six. Semi-finalist at the World Champs uh, in Oregon, and he would have fancied his chances of getting in the shake-up for the semis. So no South African in six. Nathaniel, though, in seven. And Moresa on the inside for Kenya in lane two. Arguably among those to watch. Along with the Barbadian, Kyle Gale in four. About that 45 1 8 though from Nathan Allen, absolutely effortless. Right then, Michael Francois of Grenada, national champion over the 800 meters as well. So watch for him coming through late on. The 23 year old is in PB shape this year, and might need to be again. Samson Nathaniel, a semi finalist four years ago on the Gold Coast, and made the semis. In the African champs in Mauritius. Could he get close to 45 seconds here today? Nene is not there in six, so it's a, a long walk for the camera crew into Ken Reyes, the Turks and Caicos. Season's best of 53 seconds. He's not quite in that PB shape. Certainly what we've seen this year. Kyle Gale then, a PB in Texas, 45.4. The Barbadians are riding high with their 400 meter running. Shade Williams has gone well already today for them. And they have Jonathan Jones going in the last of the heats. Shadrick Tanzi of Papua New Guinea. PB in Saipan earlier this year. Can he break it again here? Track is fast and people seem to be enjoying these conditions. Will that be the case for Boniface Moresa? Semi-finalist in the World Champs in London, a former World Junior finalist and fifth in the world indoors back in 2016. Confirmation that Conte of Sierra Leone occupies the slowest of the three non-automatic spots at the moment, just outside 47 seconds. Moresa Kenya in two, Tanzi oh, Papua New Guinea three, Gail Barbados in four, Reyes Turks and Caicos five, a gap then to Nathaniel of Nigeria in seven, and Francois of Grenada will be on the outside in eight. Top three coming back for the semi-finals. You can hear a pin drop here in this fabulous arena. A fantastic day for world-class sprinting. Set. Well, Nathaniel's got a good target in Francois outside him. And Gale has already gone past the athlete from the Turks and Caicos. Good running as well by Tanzi of Papua New Guinea, trying to get in the mix and stay with the Barbadian. They're coming through on the inside, Moresa. Nathaniel, around about second place on the outside, but it's the Kenyan on the inside. And now the real work begins. Francois of Grenada trying to get back in the mix for a top three. The Barbadian is struggling. This is good running by Moresa. Easing down at the line. Moresa takes it just inside 46 seconds. Nathaniel and Francois are the other two qualifiers. High hopes for Gale of Barbados, but he faded down the last 50. Tight lane that for a big, strong man like Boniface Moresa. But that was an excellent piece of qualification by the Kenyan from lane two. It was. I'm still recovering from Nathan Allen, the Jamaican in the previous heat. 
which we've mentioned about 5,000 times of how impressive it was. But that was a competitive heat, wasn't it? Moesa, as you say, Rob, in lane number two. Big Q, 45.91. And as with every sprint race at every big major championships, you only get to really see the full deck of cards and what an athlete's got at the semi-final stage. And the semi-finals are on Friday, as we've mentioned for both the men and the women in this 400 meters before the finals on Sunday morning. Seema Waiser, though, making his way nicely down the back straight. The Nigerian was moving nicely in lane number seven. But in the sunshine, automatic qualifying done for those that we expected in that third heat. And the Kenyan was blowing a little bit, puffing out his cheeks there at 300 metres. Effort-wise, maybe six or seven out of ten. He ran the first 300 nicely, and I've said this many, many times, you have to execute the first part of a race, whether it's 100 metres or a 400 metres. Set yourself up, then you can shut down. And I think that's what he did there, and the Kenyan will be happy with that. Only he'll know how much effort he really put in, of course, Rob, but it looked pretty impressive, didn't it, there? 45.91. Yeah, it was a good run, and that's a, that's a horrible lane for him into the Papua New Guinean athlete. Tanzi went out really fast. And that certainly helped, although he faded in the closing stages. Nathaniel, another big, strong competitor. I thought he might come under pressure from Kyle Gale, who studies uh, in the United States. But the Barbadian was just beginning to fade. Moresa was home and hosed, and it was a good last 25 metres. I did say that Francois Grenada on the outside has got excellent 800 metre strength, and I think that's what got him the third automatic spot. Yeah, very good speed endurance. Sprinters step up with good speed and get endurance. Little distance runners drop down and try and get the speed. Not Grenada's number one, of course. That's Karani James. But that was a good piece of running and good qualification from those lining up in heat number three. And that strong finish, as Rob Walker said, from Michael Francois on the outside line. Got him that third position in a lifetime best of 46.35, so well done to him. But a nice little lean back from the Kenyan there, Rob, nice and easy. Yep, part one of his mission is complete. He's got himself into the semis along with the likes of Cox and Allen from Jamaica. Solomon, the former Olympic finalist, is there, and so too is Boniface Moresa. Bring the official confirmation of that shortly, but the results still yet to be forthcoming, so we'll keep a close eye on that just in case there's any retrospective disqualifications. We're not expecting to see any, but we'll we'll mop that up in due course. But uh, the unofficial result, Moresa took it, Nathaniel and Francois were the other two qualifiers with Gale in the mix for a non-automatic spot. And there's someone who should get a big response from the home crowd on his home track with a big, bright bronze medal in his hand luggage coming back from Eugene. <laughs> yeah, Matt Hudson's with. Although, listen to this, that uh, bronze medal run in Eugene was 10 days ago. It's uh, not long ago at all. I just do wonder whether or not with the jet lag, the long haul travel back from the uh, west coast of uh, the Pacific Northwest of the USA, the celebrations after that bronze medal, Matt might be carrying a bit of fatigue coming into this one. We shall see. He has had a remarkable season setting the uh, UK record, a long, long-held UK record by Ewan Thomas, uh, improving it by, was it one one-hundredth of a second back on uh, the 28th of May when he came third at the Prefontaine meeting. There's Joe Breyer of Wales. He will go in lane two in this uh, fourth heat of seven. Commonwealth uh, silver medalist over the 400 hurdles back in 2002 was his coach, Matt Elias, who has uh, another charge in this race. Ah, so that's why we've had a little bit of a delay confirming the result from Heat 3. A real shame, despite his fast-starting heroics, Tanzi of Papua New Guinea has been disqualified, but that doesn't affect the top of the leaderboard. Moresa is still through, so too Nathaniel and Francois. Gale will have to wait and see whether that time is good enough for one of the non-automatic spots with a very quick heat to come. There is the lineup for Heat uh, 4. Breyer goes for Wales in two, Hudson Smith goes in three. One of the favourites, of course, the World Championship bronze medalist from 10 days ago. 
Let's have a look at the athletes in slightly more detail now. For Sheikou Sherry of Sierra Leone goes uh, in lane eight. Best of 48.74 this year, that's all. But it is a 45.7 performer. I wonder if he can find that 45 second form from lane eight. Bakar, Tednap, Sangu of Cameroon goes in lane seven. A 46.29 performer this year. Has the uh, national record of 46.03. There's Dubum Amene of Nigeria. He's only 19, went out in the heats of the World Juniors last year. But 45.51 is his lifetime best from earlier on this summer. In lane five, inside him is Guernsey's own Cameron Chalmers, also coached by uh, Matt Elias. He's only run four 400s this year, 46.27 he's down to, but he has run 45.6. Adriano Gums of the British Virgin Islands goes in lane four. 48.4 for him this year. It's a good lane drop, but he'll need to find another second or two, I think, if he wants to get into the top three here. And there is Matt Hudson-Smith. Listen to the welcome for him from this Birmingham crowd. Brilliant 44-66 for the bronze medal at the World Championships for the 27-year-old, who's had far more than his fair share of injuries. And on the inside there in lane two, Joe Bryant of Wales, fourth in the UK Championships this year, the Swansea Harrier. And uh, his coach, Matt Elias, was a mighty experienced 400-meter hurdler. And it was always, and it's one of the bizarre features of uh, track and field athletics for the sprinters, the 400-meter hurdlers carry the baton oh, wonderfully no. well. Remember Chris Akabusi back in 1991? Matt Elias was a fierce carrier of the baton when he uh, helped Britain take gold back in 2002 in Munich in the 4 by 400 meters. This, though, is the individual 400 metres. Heat four of seven for the men. Joe Breyer of Wales in two. Hudson Smith of England goes in lane three. Gums of the British Virgin Islands in four. Cameron Chalmers of Guernsey in five. Dubem Amene of Nigeria in six. Tednap Sangu of Cameroon in seven. And Sheriff of Sierra Leone in lane Set. eight. <laughs> Glorious sight. The sun's still pouring down now, the sky about 90% blue, the track about 99% blue, apart from those white lines separating these uh, seven athletes. Hudson Smith, then third from right in the red and white of England, going well down the back straight, has that lovely barrel-chested forward lean to his style and moving really well around the second bend at the moment. Also going well for Nigeria in the green vest is Amene. He's looking strong in six as uh, they come into the straight. Hudson Smith, that rolling technique of his, almost looks like he's falling forward. It's a wonderful sight. Briar coming through strongly for Wales in lane two. It's going to be Hudson Smith. Briar challenging for second. Amene is going to get second, I think, though, for Nigeria there. Yes, he is. 46-26 for Hudson Smith, ahead of Amene of Nigeria and Joe Briar of Wales. That's the one, two, three. They go through without any problems. And that for uh, Matt Hudson Smith. Uh, just about a perfect pipe opener. I think something to uh, clear things out and he can now uh, check everything's okay, go back and relax for the rest of the day and start thinking about the semi-finals. You made a good point, Tim, before you started commentary on that one. It was only 10 days ago and it would have taken a lot out of him physically and emotionally to get that bronze, but that was... That was good. And what was important, perhaps, there, from his perspective, he got a huge reception from the crowd. He got the hard work done early, and then when he came into the home straight, he relaxed because you don't win the gold in the heat. And it was a massive reception for him. Very important, Catherine, that he just kept himself cool and keeps his powder dry for the semis and then the final. 100%, Rob. Nice and easy from Matt. On his home track, as Tim said, family here, of course, in the West Midlands. He hasn't gone home between winning that medal in Oregon. He stayed focused because he knows the celebrations from that individual medal at the World Championships would be huge. So he's keeping his focus here. That was nice and easily done. And when he won his bronze medal in Oregon and ran his 44.66, he said to me, it's one of the messiest races I've run. I didn't execute what I was supposed to do, but such is the place now that Matt's in physically and mentally, his talent will get him to major championship medals now. And that's, that's, that, that's, a, that's a good start for Matt. That's a good start. Well, it's funny you say that. I, I had a very strong feeling he was going to break the European record in that world championship final held by Thomas Schoenleber. Goes I think back, everybody what, did. 80s? 87, world yeah, championships yeah, long, in Rome. Uh, anyway, he knows he's got his work cut out because I know we keep mentioning about Alan 
the Jamaican, that he's produced the most eye-catching qualification so far for the semi-finals. But nonetheless, that was good work by Matthew Hudson-Smith. And what a, and you mentioned again, Tim, what a really good run from the inside from Joe Breyer, clawing his way back up into an automatic qualification spot. Yeah, Joe Breyer there working away in that uh, red strip of Wales. Hudson-Smith almost walking across the line there, doing the minimum necessary. I think uh, there's plenty more in reserve for the uh, big Brit. Born in Wolverhampton, just up the road. Matt Hudson-Smith, coached by uh, Gary Evans, and, uh, of course, a clubmate of Catherine Merry, based here at uh, the Burtfield Harriers' home track. Anyway, he's uh, come from almost zero to hero this year. He came into the summer without a sponsor and began to uh, rack up good results, culminating in that... Uh, third place back in late May with 44.35. He turned up at the Paris Diamond League, felt a slight niggle, decided to opt out of that one. I think he had a slight foot niggle, nothing serious, but he, have, despite having travelled to the Parisian capital, he didn't run. Or was, was it Paris? Yes, it was, I think. And uh, and then won the UK title in 44.9 in, in strong winds in Manchester, just uh, 80 or 90 miles up the road from Birmingham here. And then negotiated the heats and the semis and the final in Eugene at the World Championships with real maturity. And he is becoming very much the finished article. Uh, a medal here at these championships of any colour would be fabulous and uh, could be the best colour. There it is then, Hudson Smith, 46-26. He's got another couple of seconds in hand almost. Dube Mamene of uh, Nigeria looking just fine and qualifying through to the semis. and.